Fewer than 10% of children's books focus on a female main character. Only 7% of superheroes are girls. And women, along with their contributions, are often left out of history. I'm Bailey. And I'm Nicole. And together we wrote and illustrated Rosie, a Detroit Her Story. Rosie, a Detroit Her Story is the children's book for people who love history. And not only who love history, but who want to celebrate the fact that less than 7% of children's books show a woman in a main role. With illustrating all the different Rosies, what most people think about is the black haired woman with the, you know, look that we're sporting right now. But really, it was every type of woman you can imagine. You have tall women, short women, you know, heavier set women, super skinny women, black women, Latino women, Italians, East European, and you know, the mom next door. Every type of woman was a rosy. It wasn't just the one that you picture on the poster. As an adult in college, it's often your first exposure to sort of the founding mothers or women who've made a huge campaign throughout history, whether it be for equality or civil rights or any of the many, many progresses that women have made. So for us to be able to show sort of Rosie, this, this wonderful um, archetype of all women who went into factories during World War II, who became a part of the war effort, who smashed these glass ceilings and who really drove women's careers forward uh, as an accessible book for young kids so that they're familiar with these ideas long before they're ever going to learn them in school and maybe get excited about them as younger students. A world war and a president's decree began a quest in which women were key. Heroines emerged that no one expected, young women building the unprecedented. Across America, women showed their might. Rosie the Riveter was born in this fight. And in Detroit, where battles never waged, they helped win a war and saw a nation changed. This true story starts before most women had careers. And a world war occupied nearly everyone's fears. In 1939, the Germans crossed over Poland's territory line. The Nazis invaded and we must help out, yelled President Roosevelt without any doubt. But as England and France both entered the fight, Americans suffered from nearness of sight. Our oceans protect us, we're so far away. Their isolationism no one could sway. With Churchill calling so desperate for aid, Roosevelt struggled to get his war plan made. Congress simply would not get on board with the thought. He had to negotiate without being caught. Now that the fires of war and industry were lit, the women of Detroit declared, we can do it. 